This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Well, hello and welcome to India Questions. Today we have a very, very special guest from across the border. Someone close to all of us. We admire him. We tend to fear him a bit. And most of us think he's such a nice guy that actually we wish he was Indian. Perhaps we should adopt him, should we? Yes, sir. Right? Honorable Indian. Honorary Indian. Honorary Indian, yeah. Oh, not honorable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, especially a few years ago, we'd have loved to have him in our cricket team. I'm, of course, talking to the best-known man from Pakistan in India, and I include even Musharraf in that, better known than Mr. Musharraf, Imran Khan. <laughs> now, of course, uh, apart from his cricket, uh, most of you do know that he has been voted once as the sexiest man in the world. And we have a very young audience here, ready <laughs> and waiting to find out everything that you ever wanted to know about Imran, but you were afraid to ask. Now's your chance. Anything, free for all. But more than just being a hugely popular guy, Imran is a man of many parts. So today, we plan to ask him about his various strengths. We've got four sections in the show, and we'll start with the obvious one, cricket. We'll move on to politics. He has been fighting for democracy for years. That's another reason he should be uh, an honorable Indian. Uh, both his own politics and Pakistan politics we've talked about. He's got strong views on that. The third section, we'll ask him about his charities. He lives for those, actually. That's deep down in his DNA. And in the final section, we'll have a free-for-all and ask him about his love life. Okay? Ready? Get your questions ready. But first, let's talk about cricket. I, I use the prerogative of an anchor and just start off by saying it's been uh, talked about a, a way like the uh, ping pong diplomacy between China and America. It brought India and Pakistan together again, kind of a peace initiative. But has it really done that? Is cricket bringing the two countries closer together, or is it a bit like a war on the field? Actually, if uh, the politicians uh, make the right noises and talk about friendship, then cricket actually acts as a cement. Yes. You know, it helps. Yeah. But if the politicians are talking about war, then the cricket field becomes it's like tense. a war. Yeah. So it, all, it basically depends on the leadership of the two countries. Right, right. What sort of, you know, before yeah. a cricket match, what, what is the atmosphere? You know, I've had a hobby horse for about five, seven years now, and I've even asked General Musharraf about this in an interview, and he said, yes, he's for it. That for the sake of peace, we once have a joint India-Pakistan team to take on the rest of the world. Would you, would you support such a thing? Except it would take away the fun from that Indo-Pak match, you know, which is so special. We have special. those as well, yeah. Uh, yes, I... Uh, Who would be uh, captain, though? <laughs> uh, the current uh, two teams? You see, it's 11, unfortunately, so you can say 5-5 five, five, and then one captain. Well, I would say that Dravid uh, would be the captain. Not, not, not based on not, country, but based on personality, cricket strength, etc. Uh, not it? being diplomatic. <laughs> uh, I actually think that, um, you know, Dravid is, uh, is a, he's more of an aggressive captain. He's a bold captain. He leads from the front. Right. In Zamam, although I would say is a, is a greater player, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this would uh, be controversial uh, here, but for me... player, Inzimam? Inzimam would be a greater batsman. Uh, <laughs> but as a, as a captain, he's too laid back. Yeah. You know, but he, he, you're a great fan of his, right, Inzimam? In terms of uh, as a batsman, I think he hasn't really... Uh, he, he's not... The amount of talent God gifted him with, right. he's not really done justice to it, and even then he averages 50. Amazing, actually. Okay, cricket questions. Anybody? Uh, the young girl in the black at the back. Yes, ma'am. So you started with your cricketing career at a very young age of 18. And in your very first match against England, your performance was a very unimpressive one. After that, you were rated as a substandard test player. 
Didn't this thing discourage or demotivate you in any sense? You've been doing your research, I see. Yeah, solid on Google. <laughs> uh, I was... it's, a, it's an important question. How do you face those kind of setbacks? You see, every uh, cricketer, except for you know, very few names I can think of, when they first came into cricket, test cricket, uh, they went through a patch where they were dropped. You know, uh, I, Ganguly, actually, yes. everyone, I mean, except, I'm, 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 not even, I'm not sure about Sachin, Sachin, but I know about the rest, that everyone was dropped after Javed Miadad, my cousin Majid, who became one of the great cricketers, he was dropped, almost everyone. Um, that's really the period where, you, uh, what we call as a sportsman, it's your character building period. Either you fade away, because everyone says you're no good, or you analyze yourself, decide where, you, where your weaknesses are, then work hard to correct those weaknesses, and you always come back much stronger. But so, it's bloody hard work, and it's, it's, it's demoralizing. So you have to fight both mind and your weaknesses in terms of your technique or whatever. You see, there is no shortcut in, in sports. You know, if life, you want to make it to the, in life there is no shortcut. The higher you aim at, the harder you've got to work. But I always found one thing in successful sportsmen. They could analyze their mistakes better than the ones who, were, who, who even were more talented than them, but did not have this ability to do a correct analysis. Right, right. Okay, next question. How about this young lad, uh, we just, yeah, go ahead. If you're given a chance to coach Indian bowlers, what will you answer? Exactly yes or no, in one straight word. No, if I was asked to become a coach of Indian, of Indian bowlers. bowlers, to coach Indian bowlers, you know the controversy behind. Uh, I think you also coached um, Wasim Akram did, and there was a bit of a uproar in Pakistan. Why are you coaching Indians, etc.? Does that bother you? Would you no. still coach Indians? <laughs> but you know, when you're playing international cricket, um, young cricketers always uh, uh, pick the brains of great cricketers, whatever nationality they belong to. Exactly, yeah. Now, when I was, um, you know, who, who did I learn from? I learned, uh, I got the best tips from John Snow, who was English, Mike Proctor, who was South African, and uh, to some extent, Dennis Lilly was Australian. Kapil Dev? <laughs> Kapil was <laughs> junior, so I mean. So did you teach him? You know, he was a bit shy, he didn't ask. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have, I would have helped he him. He would have. So the answer is yes, he would. Okay, how about uh, the young lady here in the th uh, third row? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, Inzamamul Mamul Haq is the present uh, captain of Pakistan no. team. Who is the future uh, pa uh, captain. captain of the Pakistan team? Well, I think Yunus Khan is, is the natural captain. And the reason why I say he's a natural captain is because he has the character. He's selfless. You know, one of the most important things for a captain is that he has to be selfless. He should play for the team. And, he should be, and when you're selfless, you're involved with the team. In case of Yunus, uh, you know, he oozes this uh, selflessness on the field. You know, he's always involved. He's, uh, you know, and, and then, of course, he has the other important characteristic a captain must have. That's guts, courage. And, you know, if you, uh, a, a, a cowardly captain is a contradiction in terms. Right. You cannot have a leader who does not have courage and guts. So I think Yunus is, Yunus is the natural captain. There's one other thing. Uh, he's appeared a lot on our channels. And all our women anchors think he should join Bollywood as well. Uh, who, who, Yunus Khan? Yeah. They think <laughs> he's... <laughs> he should. <laughs> yeah. That's the question. Why don't you why join Bollywood? Join have you ever been asked? I ever? was actually, you won't believe it, I was asked by one great uh, Indian actor who all, we all used to look up to, in fact even turned up in England, to ask me to act in a film. But you know, it's a, it's a, I was puzzled. I, I won't name him because, you know, it'll be embarrassing. But, no, it's a credit to him. <laughs> okay, it was, uh, you know, Devanand, who in my yeah, time yeah. was a great one. Yeah. Well, good for Devanand. I think he did, it was a great but, idea. But no, but it's a you know for me, it is just uh, uh, it's strange that why would, how can someone you know just because I'm playing cricket, how can I become an actor? You know, it, it makes no sense to me. Actually, also someone else, Ismail Merchant, once asked me to act in a film. But again, I'm I'm I was always puzzled that how can I act? 
I mean, you know, I was, I couldn't even act in a school play. Forget about, you know, going into films. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he looks good enough to act in a Bollywood film. Right, right. Okay, how about this girl here? Actually, I meant you earlier, yeah, in the brown, yeah. How would you rate the present Pakistani cricket team as compared to the one for which you were the captain? You know, actually, the, the team that won the World Cup, and for the next six years, I thought that was the best ever Pakistan team in our history. And also, it should have been the number one team because West Indies had gone down by then. So I thought they did not do justice to them because they had the greatest, two great fast bowlers of the time, Wasim and Wakar. Both had their peak. They had Siklan Mushtaq, who was at amazing. that time an amazing off-spinner. Then they had Enzamam, and they had batting, which was quite strong. So basically, I mean, great teams have great bowling attacks. You know, uh -huh. you look back, Spoken it's... Spoken like a true bowler. Well, you started your life as a batsman, really. I did, but you know, I mean, you look, Wes Hall and Charlie Griffith, they dominated. That's then true. Lily Thompson dominated. Then the West Indian fast bowlers dominated. Right. And as they were going down, mm -hmm. Wasim and Wakar came up, and yeah. Pakistan should have dominated, but it did not. Uh, I didn't think they did justice to themselves. Uh, but this current Pakistan team, because of its bowling attack, and they have two great bowlers. One is Shoaib Akhtar, the other is Mohammad Asif. Unfortunately, both of them not available. Do you feel there's a bit of vindictiveness in that because they were never really liked? Is there something, there's always this suspicion, you know, India and Pakistan are conspiracy theory countries. So is there a conspiracy against these two guys? No, I, I just think it was, uh, you know, the timing of the test was strange that a day before a vital match, suddenly you find out two key players are not available. They should have done, the test results should have come before the team selection. So the selectors should have then had a right, the right team. Poor Yunus Khan, before the first match, is left with minus two fast bowlers and actually without a strike bowler. Uh, so uh, I don't think it was a conspiracy, it was bad timing. Okay, how about this young man here in the pink shirt? Yeah. Sir, cricket has been ev evolving ever since it started. First there were the five days matches, then one days, then now even 2020. So what do you think is the basic difference between the game cricket played uh, about 30, 40 years back and which is played now? Well, uh, one day cricket is now in abundance, much more than I think it is good for cricket because um, while it is raking in money for the cricket boards and while it is entertaining for the public, but what it is doing is that the standard of uh, Fast bowling is going down. Because see, one day cricket takes its toll on fast bowlers. Because it is a very hectic cricket, which for a batsman is not a problem. For a medium pacer, it's easy. For a spinner, it's not a problem. But a fast bowler, if he g carries an injury in one day cricket, the, the, the pace of cricket is so fast, he's likely to aggravate it. Which is why at the moment, you hardly see any fast bowlers. Whereas in 80s, when I was playing, every team had a quality fast bowler. The West Indies had such depth in fast bowling that their second string fast bowlers and went and destroyed South Africa on a rebel tour. Their second string. I mean, Sylvester Clark alone, who couldn't get into the West Indies, single-handedly destroyed South Africa. So that was the sort of quality of pace bowling. You don't find it today because it's taking its toll on the fast bowlers much more than, uh, than you Are know. Are you saying that the fewer the number, the shorter the game, it's more becoming a batsman-dominated game? Batsmen dominate, very difficult for fast bowlers to survive the space. Right. So they've got to, you know, they've got to have a, a more balanced itinerary. So fielding standards have improved. Tremendous. Running in between wickets has improved. Uh, the batsmen are playing more strokes than they were playing before because of the amount of one-day cricket. But the level of fast bowling has gone down. But, you know, you look at the stadiums at test matches, they're never full. It's a bit like classical music versus pop music. Everybody still says test cricket is the thing, but so few people are watching. How does one change that? You see, for a cricket connoisseur, uh, you know, I mean, I would only judge a cricketer of his performance in a test match. I, I would never judge a, a cricketer on his one-day performance because test match... But are you sounding old-fashioned there? No, it, I mean, you ask any current cricketer. I'm not talking about old cricketers, not my age. Young, even now you ask uh, the current cricketers, they will gauge a cricketer on his performance in test cricket. Because test cricket is a test of a cricketer, a complete test. Right. One day cricket is, um, you know, those, the sort of cricketers who can get away with uh, uh, in one day cricket, 
cannot uh, necessarily yeah. get away in test cricket. Right. Whereas a great test cricket will always do well in one day cricket. Right, right. Okay, we'll take a short break. When we come back, or before we come back, you said he should get into Bollywood? Yes. Do you know who his favorite Bollywood actress is? No. You want to know? Actually, they just want to know one small thing. Who's your favorite Bollywood actress? Well, you see... Now, said, don't be diplomatic. No, no, I'm, I'm not being... <laughs> I, will, I love them all. They're no, 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 all I will not be different. Because you see, I haven't, you know, my life in the last 15 years, politics, charity, so on, has taken me away. Plus, you know, no, I no longer need that escapism which you at your ages need. You know, you want to sort of fantasize and stuff. I passed that age too. Diplomatic. So therefore, I hardly watch any films now. But in my time, in my time, I'm, I'm coming to that. In my time, I thought Wahida Rahman was the greatest actor. All right. So you still carry a torch for Vahida <laughs> Rahman. <laughs> okay, on that, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk to Imran and ask questions, uh, not about cricket, but about his politics and how he's fighting for democracy. That's it a moment from now. <laughs> 